Okay, so I think we can start as our attendees roll in. I want to say hello and welcome to our second public session of the school. My name is Hannah Tabar. I will be introducing today's session, not really moderating. There's a lot to talk about. I am one of the co-founders of Fursa School, which is an initiative that Sharjah Arts Foundation and Naft Critic combined courses on as a way to create an educational program that arms creative freelancers with the tools they need to navigate and pivot their professional lives, specifically here in the UAE. One of the topics that has come up a lot uh, and is very elusive to the creative practitioner is uh, situations around understanding the law here what in a sense can protect us, what doesn't protect us, and often the intimidation that we experience when going through contracts, understanding our rights, intellectual property, and even the, the kind of culture around negotiation as well. We were extremely fortunate to come across the Maha Ben Hindi law firm, which is the first commercial boutique law firm that provides specialist legal services to private clients. Among these clients are those from our creative community. And so it was a really great uh, opportunity to, to meet and connect with our panelists today. So we have Al Estada Maha Ben Hindi. So Maha Ben Hindi is the managing partner of the firm and she obtained her Bachelor of Law from the University of Westminster in London and her Master of Laws in International Business and Trade Law from Fordham University in New York. So Maha is a qualified Emirati lawyer holding the right of audience before the UAE's federal courts and the Dubai courts. There is more information on her bio on our website as well. So you can see that long extension of wonderful credentials. We have Mohammed Abdel Munam, senior associate at the firm, and he is an Egyptian qualified lawyer with over nine years experience in the legal fields across the GCC and Egypt. He joined the firm as an expert in developing winning litigation strategies pertaining to civil, commercial, corporate, real estate, insurance, and aviation laws. We also have an Ustad Abdullah Rukin, who is an advocate and uh, is specifically in the dispute resolution team. He advises and represents the firm's clients in civil, commercial, criminal, real estate, and rental cases appearing in the courts of first instance and courts of appeal. I hope uh, that was a good enough introduction to, to all of you. And we again want to say thank you so much. This webinar will go on for an hour and if we are able to allocate just a bit of time for one or two questions, so this is to the attendees, uh, we will let you know, but forgive us if we are unable to. Thank you. Thank you, Nahla, for this uh, wonderful introduction. Um, good evening, everyone. I would like to thank Sharjah Art Foundation and NAFT for introducing this wonderful education and professional program under FORSA School. I'm honored to be part of this program. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a lawyer and also an art enthusiast. My father is an art collector and, close, and my close friends are mostly artists. So you can see that despite being a lawyer, I'm surrounded by, I'm surrounded by artists. My passion for this industry has developed throughout the years and my profession now encompasses working with artists. Some may wonder how so, most of the artists I know have been involved in various prominent projects in the United Arab Emirates. They have excellent ideas and creations, but there's one thing most of them lack, which is a very, very crucial aspect. And that is the commercial part of dealing with matters. Some artists come with a non-business mindset and frequently get taken advantage of. And I think it is important for them to realize the value of their work and how they should deal with commercial art projects from a legal angle, ensuring that their rights are protected. I truly believe supporting the creative industry is important for a dynamic economy as the essence of the human experience shapes the future. If we are to empower our youth, we must help them de develop their creativity. According to Edgar Degas, 
Art is not what you see, but what you make others see. I'll divert the session to my team, Abdullah Rakan and Muhammad Abdul Manam, who will take over. I will be available for our private session today at 6 p.m. Thank you. I'll just share my screen. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdullah Rakan. Um, I'm an advocate in uh, Mahab and Hindi law firm. Um, today I'll be speaking about um, three topics or four topics to be exact. And then I'll hand, I'll hand over um, the fifth topic to Mr. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Minim. Um, the four topics that I'll talk about uh, today is first the general background on UAE laws, uh, the distinctions between common law and civil law, uh, the definition and pillars of the contract under the UAE civil transaction uh, transactions law or the civil code. And finally, the introduction to the Berne Convention for the Protection of Liter Literary and Artistic Works. First of all, the general background on UAE laws. Um, in the UAE, or let's get back a step, in the whole world, there are several um, legal systems governing um, each and every country. Um, uh, two uh, um, dominant uh, legal systems are the common and civil uh, legal systems. Um, there are other types of legal systems, such as the communist legal systems or um, the Islamic uh, uh, legal system. But as I just said, those two, the common law and the civil law, um, legal systems are the most common in uh, the whole world. Um, the United Arab Emirates adopts the civil law system. Um, it's a mixture, to be honest, or to be more exact, uh, between Sharia, uh, the Islamic Sharia, and the French civil law. Um, however, some UAE uh, free zones adopt the English uh, type of legal system, that is the common law uh, system. Um, the common law system governs the uh, most of the English speaking countries in the world. So um, such as uh, uh, the USA and uh, um, Canada, Great Britain, etc. So some UAE free zones adopt the common law uh, system. One of them is the DIFC the Dubai International Financial, the financial Center. Um, the differences between both systems will be explained in the next slide as it, as it is uh, of importance for you to know. Um, particularly in the UAE, regarding artists' rights and what governs um, artists' contracts uh, and uh, transactions related um, to their work there are three main legislations. The first is the civil code. The second is the commercial code. And those two are general legislations. The third is a more specific legislation. That is the copyright and related rights law of 2002. Um, these rules were adopted, or the rules of this law was adopted, were adopted from the Berne Convention of 1886, uh, which the United Arab Emirates joined in 2004, as I will explain furthermore. So when it comes to the, the, to the distinction between common and civil law systems, first of all, we'll start by explaining the, uh, the um, uh, the features of this uh, common law uh, legal system. So the main distinction between both uh, systems and the main feature of the common law legal system is that it relies on precedence, legal precedence, and consider it to be binding. This is known as the case law. Under this system, judges tend to rely on court decisions as an authority for deciding uh, cases involving similar facts. Um, 
this allows judges to tailor legal precedents to fit a given situation before them. The principles of the, uh, of the common law system can be uh, mentioned in three points. Three main points are, uh, the first is that the judicial decisions are binding, as I just said. Higher courts decisions are binding to the lower uh, courts, uh, uh, to the lower courts. And it can't be overturned unless it is issued by the same level of court or by legislation. Um, the second is that there is an extensive freedom of contract. So few provisions are only implied by law into the contract. Um, but most provisions are um, led to the freedom of the contracting parties. Um, generally, everything is permitted that is not expressly prohibited by law. When it comes to the civil law uh, features, civil law legal system, it is a bit of a co codified legal system. The judges rely more in, on codes rather than legal precedents. Those codes are passed by the legislature, um, not by uh, the highest courts. The legal codes specify all matters capable of being brought before a court, um, either regulating civil transactions, commercial transactions, um, criminal acts, uh, criminal punishments, um, real estate procedures, um, or real estate in general, etc. The when it comes to the UAE civil code, we um, as uh, lawyers or as uh, people of legal background, we call the civil code as the father of all codes because it's the, the, uh, the foundation of all laws in land. This, the, the UAE civil code was driven from, first of all, the uh, Ottoman civil code. Um, that is called the Majlat uh, al-Ahkam al adliya and that was in the Ottoman uh, Empire. Um, this civil code, or the Ottoman civil code, was even driven from the uh, Hanafi uh, Sunni school of fiqh. Um, also, the UAE civil code borrowed a lot of its uh, rules from the uh, Egyptian civil code uh, of uh, 1949, which was also derived from the French uh, uh, civil code. Basic rights and duties are outlined by the constitution and the series of codes in the civil uh, legal system. What, are, what is binding to all uh, people living in uh, a civil law country, uh, or even the courts, it's the legislation. Legal precedents, as, as I just mentioned, um, it's not binding um, to everyone living in the country, rather than the, the, the legislation. Um, when it comes to the freedom of contra contracts, um, actually the, the civil law um, system does not grant people much freedom uh, in drafting their contracts as the common law legal system. Uh, many provisions are uh, already there by law. Even if you uh, mention them in your contracts, it can be outrun or outturned by, by the law itself. Um, it, there is much space for judges to enter to uh, inter interpret the the legal provisions in light of uh, or the contracts provisions in light of the legal uh, provisions in legislation. So, when it comes to a contract, we must first define what is a contract and then set 
its pillars. Because uh, if uh, those pillars were, uh, or one of those pillars uh, was not in a contract by the way the law wanted it to be, the contract may be void. So Article 125 of the Civil Code, of the UAE Civil Code, outlines the definition of a contract. So it says that the contract is the meeting of an offer and uh, its acceptance by, a, by the other contracting party. And there might be even more than two contracting parties. Um, it's not just two. Um, so in this definition, uh, legal scholars and courts also in the UAE set down three pillars of uh, contracts. The first is that there is a meeting of minds. Uh, the minds are the contracting parties' minds. They meet on the main elements of the contract. The object of the contract must be something possible, specified or specifiable and negotiable. Lastly, the obligations arising out of the contract must, ha must have illicit cause. So after explaining um, the major elements in the UAE civil law system and the, the, uh, the freedom the, or the type of freedom in contracts in the UAE, now we'll go to further to explain where the artists' rights and protections of intellectual property is driven from. And that is the Berne Convention. After the Industrial Revolution and the development of printing techniques, the whole world realized that we must protect works and the rights of their authors. So in 1886, this led to the adaptation of the Berne Convention for the protection of literacy and artistic works. So this convention was in 1886. It was even amended several times. The last one was in 1979 to increase the rights protected under it uh, and mention the minimum protection uh, of each right. So there are three basic principles that define those minimum protections. The first is that any work of any artist is protected in one con uh, or uh, that is protected in one contracting party or contracting state has the same protection in another contracting state. This is called the uh, reciprocity of, of uh, protection. The second is that the protection must not be conditional upon a formality. Uh, this is called automatic protection. So once the work is done, it is automatically protected under law. It doesn't have to be registered to be protected. The last is the independence. Um, this is due to the sovereignty of states. Um, so if a contracting state provides a longer time of protection um, than the minimum this, uh, prescribed by the convention, say that um, the uh, convention uh, specifies that the minimum uh, period of protection is 50 years for some rights. And this uh, state um, has a law that uh, makes this um, protection last for uh, 50, uh, 75 years, say. And the work was uh, in a country of origin that is different than this state and only uh, mentions that this work is protected by the minimum 
as set in, in the Bern Convention, this work would be only protected for the period in that country of origin, not by the country that raised the, the protection uh, period. So as an overview of the Bern Convention and what it protects and uh, what rights it uh, gives to uh, the authors or artists and their works. Um, I've listed uh, several rights uh, that must be rec recognized as exclusive rights of authorization. Um, you may read it as it's uh, in front of you. One of them is the right to translate uh, your works. One of them is uh, to make adaptations and arrangements of the work. Um, another is uh, to perform, uh, to perform uh, in public dramatic, dramatic musical and musical works. Um, another is to recite literary works in public, uh, communicate in the public, broadcast, make reproductions, and uh, use the work as a basis for uh, audiovisual work. There is one more uh, type of rights that is of huge importance to any artist. It is the moral rights of, an, of a work. Uh, or um, that is given to an artist. This convention, the convention, the Bern Convention, provides for the right to claim ownership or authorship of the work and to object to any modification of the work that would be um, uh, prejudicial, prejudicial, sorry, prejudicial to the author's honor or reputation. Um, so anything that might uh, affect the uh, artist's reputation in a negative way, his honor in a negative way, this rights protects him from, um, uh, from this happening. Um, so as I previously said, when it comes to the Bern Convention, the UAE, before even entering the, the uh, or signing and uh, uh, ratifying the Bern Convention in 2004, the UAE has previously um, issued its, uh, its as, as we just said, its law on uh, copyrights and related rights. This law uh, mentioned or borrowed a lot of Bern Convention's um, uh, legal rules and provisions in order for the UAE to be able to join the Bern Convention with all of its uh, legal um, provisions already enacted in the UAE legal system. Um, so thank you everybody. Uh, and I'll pass on to uh, my colleague, Mr. Mohammed Abdel Menem so that he can continue on elaborating more on the UAE laws, uh, law number seven of 2002 on copyrights and related rights. I pass to you, Mohammed. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdullah. Thank you very much for the, all the attendees. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Nahla. Um, uh, it was very, very good introduction regarding what are the differences between both um, uh, both legal system because we usually receiving several inquiries regarding um, regarding the, the differences between the civil and common law. A lot of inquiries came to us whether they can stipulate certain condition or not. Um, Mr. Abdullah, if you, you may share the document because I have issue here for the sharing. So if you, sure. of course. you can share it from your side, please. Oh, yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, because we receive usually from even from the artist or from the digital designer um, certain provision they wanted to amend and insert it in the contract, and we were telling them it's it's somehow um, it's not mandatory or we cannot insert it because it violates the law, and they make usually combat make comparison between the legal system and their background or the back countries and here 
that's why it was very, very essential to make um, the distinction between post legal system. Um, as um, Abdullah said that um, the federal law 2007 of 2002 came before uh, the endorsement of UAE for the Berlin Convention, while UAE tried at the beginning to, to adapt the laws and engage with the international laws, they have put in their mind that the community now need to develop law matching and in harmony with the international conventions. And that's why they have introduced uh, the copyright and related laws of num uh, number seven, 2002. Uh, why we have to, to to little bit explain it, we will not go uh, in deep for the details of the law, but we have to give like a glimpse, a quick glimpse on uh, certain protection rights, obligation, and even restrictions of the rights for uh, the patents or the copyrights holders, because it might um, be a little bit different than the common laws countries. But before we go in um, a little bit far in the, in the law, it's essentially uh, to understand the law, to know certain um, definition. So by the law, what exactly the work which is entitled to the copyright protection? Uh, in article number one, it mandates that the work, the definition of the artist work, which is any innovative work in the literally artistic scientific domain whatsoever type in the manner of expression, significant or purpose. This means the work which is subject to the copyright. Any, um, for example, if I'm now painting, um, uh, making a copy for uh, Da Vinci uh, paint, this is not subject to the protection of the copyright law. Because the work, it should be unique, has certain features make it different than any other, um, any other work. Um, and it's very important to, to know who is the author, because in the, the author here in the definition makes, they give the protection for the author or the art, uh, artist, whether has, he has disclosed himself to, to the public or for his, from, from his, his own division, he preferred to make it anonymous. So you can find a lot of anonymous artists uh, present the uh, work, make it public, and still only the galleries or the, um, uh, the, the publishers knows exactly who the identity of the, of the artist. This why the author definition has included both the two artists, whoever wanted to, to share their identity or disclose their identity or want to make it anonymous. And in the law, it makes uh, as well define uh, the related right, the owners of the related rights, which is like a singer, uh, producer, broadcasting, um, or any organization working in the same field. By law, in Article 2 of the law, specify exactly what the materials or the items which are subject to uh, the copyright. It has around um, 13 items among them in, in, in briefly books, um, computer programs, uh, lectures, um, uh, applied arts, um, audio and visual arts, Digital, uh, digital arts, photographics, um, illustrations, uh, drawings, and all related works became under the law uh, protected, um, whether it has been registered or not, and that will, will, will go in, in our next slide. 
Um, Muhammad, what do you mean by registered or not? What what would it take for an artist to necessarily register their work? Is it bound by a contract of the institution uh, representing them, for example, or what would it be? Uh, by law, there is no um, mandatory, there is no rules. Who is has the right to, to assign the registration? Our uh, definition here that because if you uh, if you notice that in Berne Convention, Berne Convention has adapted the principle that the copyrights are protected, whether it has been registered or not registered with the competent registrar as the state of the signatories. What that means? It means that if I'm art artist and I have my work and presented my work to the public and for the first time, then this from this time it has certain protection. Whether I have I went to the registrar to the Ministry of Economy, for example, here in UAE and registered my my work or not, it's became protected. But to preserve my right for the authenticity of the artwork and no one would dispute with me that this art belonged to someone else, I have to register it. For example, if I now made a post on Twitter or Facebook that, guys, this is my, my artwork and now it's published. So this is the first initial date of the protection. So if someone else, has proved that they have already made this artwork before earlier and they have provided the document that's why they have to to give certain proof whether uh, official document or um, publication or uh, something material to the competent court uh, or committees to decide the authenticity of the artwork and does it cost anything to register this artwork? Like what is the, you know, for, for us, forgive us, but um, yeah. all a lot of information to take in. And it's sure. uh, interesting to know what the process is because this is ultimately something that, that can be quite difficult to comprehend. And just to understand the process, would it mean like taking the work into the ministry? Is it um, presenting documentation around it? Like what would the process be and how much does it necessarily cost to register at work? Well, um, thank you very much for your question. Um, in fact, if you saw the, there are several lists of the fees. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can, there is a table, it depends on which item you would like to register, whether it was audio or visual work or applied art or, or poets even, or articles. So each one of them has certain fees, but I, I would believe it's very, very minimal and it's very, very affordable. Um, it might take a process. That's why there are specialized firm would do this based on the power of attorney or assignment uh, by the artist. So they made the application. This application went uh, go through the, the channels. There is an electronic form. Uh, you can check, we will go after in, in, in our presentation, um, how it works and how we apply. But it's in, for me, I believe it's easy process. If some artists believe that they don't have much time to follow up, thus they can assign it to a firm. You read the items, if there are around 13 or 14 um, items subject to the protection by law. However, um, some art artists came to us and claimed that they have a dispute with, with other artists. Because of what? Because of the ideas. Well, you know that I have idea of having certain sculpture but you know, my colleague take the idea and executed it. And now I wanted to file a patent right over it or uh, copyrights over it. The issue here that 
there are certain exclusions from the law which need to be considered very well before um, going for a dispute or recognize this is a copyright or not. For example, the ideas and procedures, work methods, mathematics concepts, and abstract principles and facts, all of which as a raw material has no protection in at all. For example, if I am now discussing with you that, um, well, um, if, if someone even recognize or recall the social media movie that uh, Zulberg's colleague had this idea and concept about the matrix. And when he filed the case, he lost it because basically he was discussing, discussing it with Zulberg without putting it in certain product and material. And this is what we call a just raw material or just ideas. So for example, if I wanted to make ideas subject to the copyrights, I need to put it in certain production, like a book, pamphlet, um, um, publication, something to, 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 build, to, to make it that I have made an effort to put all together of these ideas together. And because of my effort, I have a copyright over it. But just saying the concept to someone, it doesn't have no protection. So I have a question, given that social media has become such a solid platform for a lot of us, a question that has come up is, for example, if we put some of this raw material that you're talking about on Instagram, on a public Instagram account, uh, yeah. does that kind of hold the rights as you've published and represented this raw material? Can you use to protect you? For example, if I make uh, the publication for the, um, a concept of sculpture and I posted it on the, on the Instagram, now it's not the final product. Mm -hmm. I have to put it together in something material because if I have a dispute and went through to the court, then I have the entitlement to claim my rights. For example, um, um, someone was speaking about that they have um, uh, uh, how to manage the circulation of manufacturing um, product. They came to us and they say that we need the protection because uh, a lot of our uh, employees going to other firms or other companies and selling this uh, methodology. Well, this is a concept or we can consider it as a trade secret. It's not subject to the copyright. It might be subject to another law or another legislation. But now for the applied art or um, artists in general, this might not be subject to the protection. You need to make the final product and then you can post it in Instagram, for example then you might have the right. But just a principle, a concept, it's going to be very hard to prove that you have entitlements. And would obtaining a license help that then? And if so, like, what kind of license would you need? Well, the license, I would uh, speak at the end because it's, it might be uh, a long process and need the procedures as well. Um, but I would put in my mind, uh, before uh, be, before ending the session. Um, so um, as well, um, a lot of um, um, a lot of journalists having the news, certain news, and they just published it on the Instagram or um, Twitter or any social media uh, forum. And then someone take it a copy and the original writer claim the copyright over it. Well, as a concept, there is no certain copyright on the news itself because it's still raw material. But if BBC, CNN or any other media uh, 
organization set aside a brief about the um, 2020 election, US election, and put it in certain formula and consequences and narrative. Then this became uh, a copyright or a product subject to the copyright. So just raw news still is not subject to uh, legal protection. And anything somehow became subject to the uh, public domain or available for the public domain is not um, is not uh, binding by the legal protection. Um, if we go to the um, next slide. Um, so by law, Article 5 of the law uh, specify what is what are the entitlements and the rights of the author or the artist. Um, after adapting the moral rights, which is became indefinite, and the artist will have till his life and after even for his life for his successor and hiree, have a moral li uh, rights over the um, over uh, the the piece of art or the um, product. Among them, there are the right of publishing the work from the first time, and this is very very important because he might lose his right later on to publish his work. And second. Um, right to object for any alteration of the work. For example, if an artist, there is an artist and he is claiming, um, he's claiming um, that he has presented or assigned his work to the gallery. So this gallery has made certain alteration or modification to his paint or his graphic design. And this alteration would effect on his vision or his message and the artist uh, work then still he has the right to modify or erase any modification and restore back his original um, work so as we, like we we're speaking that the moral uh, rights are indefinite and cannot be waived by the artist this is very important because some some artists would say that, well, uh, we are waiving our uh, moral rights over the product, and this is not permissible by the law, unless otherwise it's a collective product and has been assigned to organization or a company. In any way, if the product is not, or the artwork is not a collective um, effort, it cannot be assigned to uh, organization. Um, so um, in order to assign the financial rights to someone else, gallery, uh, public uh, publications, uh, or um, any organization, uh, art organization or anything, it has, um, it has, uh, sh it should be in writing, it should be and uh, it should be in writing and it should be materially authenticated. And um, the consideration should be very, very specified. It should be um, um, defined whether it will be a percentage of the profit or a lump sum for uh, the artwork. But anyhow, any assignment for the financial rights should be in writing. And this is must be and last point i would like to address here that if you have if you have uh, signed a contract with the gallery and you thought after two or three years that he got much profit than the expected you can file a case and asking for further compensation and this is what we were telling 
it's very important to know what are the difference between the civil and common law. If the common law, the contract is the contract and you cannot amend it even if you thought uh, in a lot of jurisdiction in the common law that you cannot amend the contract after that unless otherwise you have several or severe suspicious of the capacity of the person. In civil law, like here, if you thought that your consideration for your artwork is much, much lesser than expected, or the assignee got much profit than expected, then you can file a lawsuit and asking for additional amounts for your artwork. Um, this is in brief um, the, the artwork um, and a brief out of the copyright law. And we are glad to receive any question if you have. How is this different to, like, what is the difference between copyright and IP? Well, IP in general, it has a lot of things. It has patent law. It has the trademark, it has a copyright. So okay. each one of them has different characterizing and different nature. Um, I believe most of the attendees, most of them are artists. And most of the categories of the arts are related to the copyright law. Okay. And uh, another question that uh, that was brought up is, you know, given that getting these documents in place can be like a high financial burden on, on an artist, are there ways to be able to access the resources of law firms and the support of law firms without the high costs that they are reputed to be? Um... I think a lot of law firms would provide uh, uh, lucrative or very good uh, attractive uh, packages for the artist among them our law firm, because um, our law firm mainly has established in the D3 and you know the D3 is uh, uh, headquarters, let's say for the artists and designers in, in there, and the notion of our firm is to supporting as much as we can the artist. So it's not only us, there are a lot as well, different uh, law firm would give um, uh, good affordable fees to register the uh, copyrights. And you, you mentioned earlier a certificate of, of authenticity. So typically this is something that, yes, we do create and print out to accompany our work and it's something that we sign. But is that enough as a document or are you saying that this needs to be backed up by some kind of legal firm or, or a legislation or a license? Like, is it enough for the artist to create the certificate and provide it with the work? Well, um, the certificate or registration with the Ministry of Economy, um, it gives definitely higher protection to the artwork. You know now it's 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 you can you may even at your studio someone came and visit your paint or your sculpture or your design and make a copy, take it a photo and make it in his studio. And due to a little bit of laziness, you have me or you haven't introduced it to the public and he done or made it within two or three days, then how you can prove the authenticity of this work. So it's, it's, it's very important to highlight the importance to keep everything you have confidential. And if you have employees under your control, you have to sign with them confidentiality or NDA uh, agreement. And further, you have to uh, register it in later, or, uh, later on in order to avoid any dispute for the authenticity. So uh, we have another question, which is, are there small claim courts in the UAE similar to what you would have in the US? Because 
ultimately you don't always know what cases per se or what complaints or what disputes you actually want to take the trouble to take to court so is is there a way of solving these matters uh on a smaller and easier level yeah uh now um the civil procedures code um has introduced um in the last amendment um the the partial partial circuits and the full uh, circuits for the high claim the middle claim and even for small claims which is um, and there are different rules for litigation for each one of them even if it was very minimal you still you can claim for your rights there is no issue in this and just as uh, as we end the session uh, it would be great if you could shed light on on maybe some of uh, maybe like one particular case of an artist that you've been representing lately and maybe some of the things that they've been going through that obviously are very common to us and how you've been able to help them. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um... Uh, you mean now or in the private? Uh... Yeah, I mean, uh, like if we we have a few minutes left, so just any anything that you can say you can help us with. So if we were artists coming to you with some kind of conflict, what would that be, or what what examples have you come across? Well, um, I can recall now the lot of thing that came 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 to to my mind that one of the photographers uh, uh, took a very, very uh, good shot for Dubai. And, um, and one of the websites uh, has posted this photograph without his permission. And I, as I might recall, the total claim he was claiming is around, um, if I'm not mistaken, around 200,000 because basically they have violated um, his copyright over the photograph. They deleted the name of the author or the photographer, and they have breached as well the, the website, his website, because they have made a download uh, for the photo without his permission and take a screenshot. So somehow it became a violation or breaches for different laws. It's not only the copyright law, it's became as well violation for the electronic uh, or the cyber crime law. And uh, after we find the litigation process, the, um, uh, the other party came and set and make a very, very good deal and settlement with a photographer. And after that, they make a settlement agreement to giving them the right to publish his photo. So this is very simple, uh, a simple case uh, I have been through. Um, uh, but the problem now, what I'm, I, I believe that the lack of knowledge or awareness about the legal issues might put the, not only the artist, but anyone working for the um, uh, applied art or even journalists, uh, journalists uh, to uh, litigation process of the lack of knowledge of the uh, applicable law. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, I think we're going to move on to our private session now. But thank you so much for this. Uh, as I said, these are these are topics that are difficult to to digest and um, just understanding how how the law is made up has been has been helpful and also just understanding what particular arts can be protected under the law uh, I, I believe has also been just a work in pro pro progress and developing what this list needs to be and yeah thank you so much and it would be great if you could share resources on licensing and small claim courts and the the ways we can register this information as well for our attendees and the public. Sure. But thank sure. you so much.